Hey guys, and welcome back to a, another free plugin Friday where we look at free plugins that you can use in your production. Now you notice I am wearing headphones. Usually I use my monitors and don't use headphones, but I recently got Slate VSX. If you don't know what Slate VSX is, they're, um, it's like virtual headphone system. So you get the headphones, and you also get software used in your door that emulates various rooms. Now, I looked at Sienna Rooms, um, I can't remember, a couple of months ago. And it's the same concept except tailor-made headphones specifically designed for the modeling. So instead of kind of an approximation of your headphones and kind of reverse engineering them, these are flat frequency headphones that are then modeled on top of that so the headphones aren't designed by themselves to be good to listen to it's the software that's doing all the work anyway there's going to be a whole video on that um after i've used them for a bit they're very new and it's not what we're looking at today but i thought it's worth mentioning that i'm going to review this while using vsx so i was trawling the internet as i do every day and I think, I think I saw an article or I saw something that mentioned Variety of Sound 64-bit. Now, the thing about Variety of Sound is I used all their plugins back around 2011, 2012. I didn't own a lot of plugins at the time. Um, I was a student. It's funny enough, I'm a student again, but I was, I was a student. Um, hadn't really worked in a few years because I was full-time at uni. So I wasn't going out and buying a lot of plugins. And at the time, you had to buy everything outright. Waves plugins weren't $29. It was something like Mercury was $8,800, I think, when I first looked at Waves plugins. It was a very different landscape. You couldn't get the affordability you could now. So I used free plugins, and the free plugins I used for a variety of sound. The problem is they were 32-bit. And as I moved to a 64-bit system, bought other plugins, I kind of never touched them again because I really needed 64-bit plugins so I could do bigger projects. And finally, they've started making 64-bit update versions of their original plugins. So these have all got a few modern tweaks as well. They've done new versions of all the plugins, but most importantly, they're 64-bit. So today we are looking at one of my favorite plugins and the first tape emulation plugin I ever use, and that's Ferric TDS. And of course, this is TDS2 because it is the new version. And what this is, it kind of approximates tape um, by breaking it down into two different categories, dynamics and saturation. It isn't probably the most accurate tape emulation, but it's just a really cool dynamics and saturation plugin to have. It also comes with a limiter that basically functions almost like a brick wall master limiter. Uh, there's a few updates like there's calibration levels now so you can calibrate it to whatever how hot your mix is going and I think they've added oversampling to most of the plugins so a few you know new features that make it a lot better and I think new GUI just HD and all that for kind of update it to 2021 standards. So I've got this on my song Animal and I think what we'll do is we're going to loop some of the first verse. The thing with this song is it the verses are kind of the loudest part other than the solo. That's kind of where the energy is and it's like a quiet chorus. Um, if you want to go listen to the song, it is out on all uh, major distributed online services spotify apple music deezer all that um so it's the last dandelion and this is the song animal but anyway let's put it on the master bus first look at the controls and stuff and then we might put it on some different sources so first bypass Let's put it on. Okay, so let's turn the saturation off, put the limit to zero. 
side chain down and just have a look at the dynamics. Start the trim here. So again, bypass and then back on. So let's turn that dynamics up. So in the fastest recovery and of course you're going to lose volume. Some auto gain would be nice but we use the trim to compensate. So we're getting about 10 dB of dynamics compression here. And you can also see, because this is fairly hot, you're, you're also getting a little bit of saturation even at zero. So you can change the calibration. Is that a little bit more Bypassed. Let's uh, fix that trim up. So you can hear it really gluing stuff together, but it doesn't sound super compressed. Let's back it up a little bit. Again, make sure we're similar in level. And look at this recovery. Basically the release time. As you go slower, it's a lot slower and you get more compression. So what I really hear with this plugin is this kind of fattening and gluing, uh, which is very tape-like, um, but not the same as tape, but a, a similar effect to what you might want to use tape for. It doesn't get overly compressed despite really compressing it. I mean, it's definitely compressed. The, the peaks are lower and the low information is coming up. But unlike an SSL style bus compressor, which I love, by the way, it doesn't kind of lose the energy. Instead, it just gets a little bit fatter. Um, you also have a side chain. So let's have a look at the side chain. That's probably going to help. Uh, this kick has got a lot of low end, way too much low end. If I'd remixed it with um, VSX, uh, definitely wouldn't have this much low end. But we can use the side chain to help with that. So we're not over compressing there. As this kind of low mids too, that's really nice. This kind of warmth and 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 this, yeah, there's something. There's something about this plugin, whether it's close to tape or not. It, it's kind of nice. So let's turn the dynamics off and let's have a look at this saturation. You can hear it start saturating on the kick. Again, it doesn't really distort. We could probably change the calibration to be a bit more aggressive. Let's say we go to minus 12. Um, so we're getting, uh, I guess, a lot more. But it doesn't really necessarily distort a lot. We'll see on a single source what it does. But it adds definitely harmonics and kind of this kind of aggression as well. But it, it's still kind of fat. <laughs> It does affect the dynamics, of course, the saturation. So if we use both of them together, a little bit of dynamics, back off some of the saturation, maybe bring the trim up a little bit to match. Let's have a listen. Like a car in a 
Bye, boss. So I'm really noticing this kind of low mid bump, but you're not getting that much mud. Um, now, this is already a pretty thick mix, I feel, but yeah, it's adding a little bit in that kind of low end and, and thickness is really what I'd call it without ever getting harsh or without ever getting that kind of bass drop out, you often get from mix bus compression where um, the low end kind of just gets a little bit receded by the compressor. Uh, so last is the limiter and that's really aggressive. So let's have a look at the limiter. Um, we'll keep everything else on and you can just see what the effect the limiter will have. Now we're just heavily limiting. Let's bring that trim up. We pretty much destroyed all the dynamics at this point, which is probably too much, but... Yeah, different EQ and way more compressed. But even push that hard with the limiter, like full on doing hard limiting, it still sounds good to me. It's, it's probably a little over the top, of course, um, and it might be across an entire track a little bit too much. Uh, I think we just quickly move to the chorus because that's a little bit quieter and I just see what, you know, that kind of setting does. Brings up a little bit of reaper. This is a stack session, so we are getting a little bit of dropouts there. Um, yeah, memory serves me well. I, I like the sound of this. Now, you're not going to use it on everything, but like if you want to fatten up something and, and make it more dense and just a bit richer, damn, this, this plugin's great. So let's go to drums because I love tape and I love compression on drums. So I've taken off the, I had an API. 2500 style compressor on the drums. I've taken that off. Um, so we've just got a little bit of EQ and I think I've got a parallel monster on here. Yep. So this is without Ferric TDS. Uh, let's turn all everything down to zero so we can kind of dial it in. Start with dynamics. So much compression going on. We wouldn't want that much, but Still adding a little bit of weight there. Um, yeah, of course you don't want to add too much compression to your drum bus if you've already compressed your drums, but it is quite useful there. So let's have a look now at the saturation. Uh, we'll turn the dynamics again.
with the dynamics. That's probably too much compression, but you can hear how it's definitely gluing it all together. It's, it's bringing the tops and bottoms like you expect from a compressor and adding that kind of weight like we have with the um, on the stereo bus as well. So I will quickly look at bass and then maybe we'll look at putting it on vocals. So for bass, I wanted to do a little bit of a different thing. You can see we have our comp here. I've turned our comp off. Instead of just putting it on something instead of like a mixed bus compressor where I would have had it really subtle, it's going to replace our comp, which was doing about, it was a three to one ratio. I was doing a fair amount of compression. We can just turn it back on just to have a look. Yeah, up to 5 dB of compression sometimes. So we're going to do a bit of the compression duties with Ferric instead. So let's turn it on, but put it on bypass. Let's just go to the second section because there's a little bit more of a bass line going on, a bit more transients going on. So let's turn on Ferric. Seems like a lot, but sounds good. Okay, can hear a bit of distortion there. Still very subtle. Maybe a little bit limiting. Let's listen to that with the drums. No ferric. So you can see it effectively working on bass. There's a few little pops in there, and I think that's from freezing the track. Again, uh, I might just unfreeze the tracks because I'm not sure why why you're getting these little little pops in there. Um, because they seem to be consistently in the same spot. So let's now just try it quickly on vocals. I want to see what it does on vocals. So I've got it here, and it's just on the lead vocal we're just going to solo the lead vocal and then listen in the mix as well Kiss me, please. so bypassed I'm just an animal. I'm just an animal. Me and really you just want to add a little bit of something to it a little bit a bit more a bit of a moreness we crank the saturation you can really hear that saturation kick in I just wanted to be a bit subtle. Me, Not too much of the dynamics. Again, it just adds a little bit of weight, a little bit of oomph an to it. Just a little just bit of something animal, while also gluing it together. Let's listen to it in the mix. Bypass. We also have a double here. Okay, let's bring it in.
So that has been Ferric TDS, one of my favorite free plugins I've ever used. And again, still awesome now to this day. Uh, it's been a fairly long review, but I just, I can't love this plugin enough. Now, of course, with any plugin, you're not going to use it for everything. It doesn't replace everything. It's not going to replace VTM for me. It does something different. But if I need that weight and that little bit of kind of gluing kind of energy thing going on, I'm going to be jumping for Ferric TDS and putting it on those tracks. So again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. And I will see you next time.